right, so um, we just did all the rounding and uh, finishing off with the angle grinder and then the uh, and then the Dremel. The battery cutouts. So you didn't see all the Dremeling, but you saw basically what I was doing. Um, so I just went in and rounded out this curve here, made, adjusted the uh, the profile of the handle, and made all my corners nice and smooth. Um, or all my curves, rather, not corners. Um, so this is the basic outline of what the knife's going to look like. So now what we have to do is adjust the um, the thickness of our blade to make it more like a blade. Um, uh, kind of the golden rule of um, both bladesmithing in some cases and uh, bowery. Um, and this does seem like a little oversimplification, but Basically, all you're doing is you start out with a certain amount of stuff. If you're if you're smithing, you can make it. You can you know you can use your your material more effectively and form it into more of the shape of a knife. But essentially, what you do is you have some steel or you have some wood, and you take away stuff until it looks like a bow or it looks like a knife. And then when it functions like a bow or it functions like a knife, you're pretty much done. Um, that's you know really oversimplified, but that's basically what you're doing. Um, so here what we have is now we have the stock which is the same thickness all the way through But if you look on a nice knife, you have uh, two kinds of tapering you have distal tapering here and You have a tapering from the spine to the edge uh, the distal tapering is used to reduce weight on the end um, And it's very important on longer knives and longer swords because if you have a long sword for example hold on a second, Let me just grab one over here Because um, if you have a long sword, like say this uh, Chinese broadsword, which uh, I have some sword resist I don't know, I gotta get rid of. Anyway, this is a, a really nice sword. Um, and you can see that, you know, here it's really kind of thick, and then up here it's, it's really thin. Uh, you can barely probably even see it in the camera. Uh, what that lets you do is, for the metal over here, it has to hold the weight of all this metal up here and bear the stresses associated with the lever forces, because this, this metal has a lot more leverage than this one does. So this metal has to be thicker to, to not break when something is a, when tension is applied to this end. Whereas this metal is only like, you know, if it's something here, only has to hold up that much leverage versus that much leverage. So it doesn't have to be as thick to be strong enough. Uh, the second thing that you do is introduce a necessary amount of flex to your blade. Because um, longer swords and blades are need to be fle a certain amount of flexible. Um, and when it's really thick, you don't get that flexibility in there. Third thing it does is it lets you figure change your, your balance point to where you want it to be. Um, so if your balance point is too far to the end, you can take some metal off and move the balance point back towards the handle. If you want a blade with uh, a balance point more towards the end, like for say, um, like I got this Kofish, which has, which is more of like it's for heavy choppy. You want the weight back here, then you keep it thicker and you make it wider up here, so you have more material at the end, so that the weight fall, the weight gets brought forward, um, and it makes it more choppable. Anyway, so and the last thing it does, which you don't need to worry about really if you're just an amateur bladesmith here, especially if you're not making swords is uh, you can use the distal taper to affect harmonics of the blade. Um, and that is to affect where the nodes are. And the nodes are places where the vibrations will be based between your hand and your and the place where the node is. It will be such that when you hit something with that node, you won't feel the vibrations with your hands. Um, some of you may have played baseball with a really badly um, designed metal bat and had it so that when you hit the ball, it rattles your hands and, you know, it can even hurt. Um, same thing goes when you're using a sword. And actually the same thing goes when you're using a bow. And a bow we call that uh, kickback, I believe. Um, so the distal taper can be used to adjust for all these factors. Weight, point of balance, use, um, and uh, the node, the area of the node. Um, so that's what we're going to... So mostly for weight issues, because we don't need to be that thick up here. Also, let's this edge be a little thinner, so you can make delicate cuts with a tip. So we're going to make this distally tapered a bit. 
Um, and the way we're going to do that is very simple, actually. What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the blade into sections. Roughly equal here. So we have like a tip section, we have a middle section, another middle section, and then the end section up to about where the hilt will be. And what I'm going to do is to introduce a distal taper is I'll take the flap disc on my angle grinder. I'll have this in the vise um, on the board as you can see. Um, I'll have the board in the vise and then I'll have this clamp to the board so I can use it flat. Uh, that's what we're going to use this for. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll first grind this section. So, you know, I'll grind this section first. And then I'll grind this section and this section. And I'll grind this section, this section, and this section. And then I'll grind all four sections. So by the time you've done that, you've ground this section four times, this part section three times, this person twice, and this person once. Um, and then you flip it over and you do it on the other side. If you repeat this process a couple times, you end up very easily simply with um, this section being thinner, and this section being less so, and this section being less so, and this section being less so. Um, since you're not completely precise with matching up all the lines, um, both in between times you ride it and with how far up you go with your when you're grinding on the angle grinder they will tend to kind of um, level out and not be like steps so much as they get they get feathered in and blended together so you end up with a nice smooth uh, taper um, secondly so that's the first thing we'll do and, and once I and that's you figure out when you're done is you use your calipers and you say okay you know this is um, So we say, okay, this is now three and a half millimeters thick, um, pretty much all around. And let's say I want to say, okay, I'll take a millimeter off, or I'll take half a millimeter off both sides at the end. Um, so that means this should be half a millimeter off here. Uh, oh, well, you know, you do the math, like three-eighths of a millimeter off, no. Uh, Three-sixteenths of a millimeter off here, one-eighth, and... 1 16th of a millimeter off this area. And that way you'll end up with a nice taper. And once you measure that with your calipers, you know, you're done tapering for that section. Once we've done that, we'll taper it the other way. And this will taper basically down to form the edge. And we'll do essentially the same thing, but this time instead of tapering from the hilt to the tip, we're going to taper from the spine to the edge. So what we'll do is we'll draw... Um, this is really simple. I, usually, I, I actually measure them out usually, but I'm just doing this for demonstration's sake. Um, is we'll draw taper lines like that. And instead of tapering, instead of doing this part and then this part and then this part, this part, that part, we'll do from the edge up. So we'll do the edge first. So we'll grind the edge, and then we'll grind the edge in this section, and then we'll grind the edge in that, in those two sections, and then we'll grind the whole thing. Um, and so that way, again, you, you go, you repeat the process again, you do it on the other side to keep it even. And what you'll end up with is the blade will be thick on the spine, and we'll taper it down evenly to a nice, uh, keen, a nice round edge. We'll take that down to a couple, um, a small fraction of an inch, and then uh, that's then we'll sharpen it later. Um, but that's the basic process of how to how to profile a knife, a blade um, with the angle grinder the way we're doing it today. So that's what we'll be seeing next. Um, let's go.